Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. So welcome everyone. Um, today we're joined by Ian Nix. Um, Ian, this That's is good. actually episode 30 for us. Really? Yeah, of the podcast. So you've got the steam privilege. And not that 30 is really a, a big number for an anniversary or anything, but just think some poor some poor people out there have listened to me and Robin 30 times. So that's uh that's that's enough for a medal, I would have said. And people do listen to them, there's no doubt about that with the comments I get. Yep. They do they do listen to us. Um we get all sort of sorts of comments of uh when they listen to us and all the rest. So um Ian's joining us from France, uh, which is you know, thanks for, for coming on today, mate. Bonjour. Yeah, what's well, about limitation of my French as well? Um <laughs> So, um, Ian, we wanted to really pick your brain a little bit just uh, to see, well, how things are going for starters. Um, I think uh, Steve, well, I'm going to say to Steve Gallagher, you need to watch this on uh, YouTube because you'll see a bit of advertising um, for yourself. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then also, just, uh, I mean, I know you're a little bit withdrawn from the industry now, but just what's going on? Just, you know, I'm not being funny. Is it... Uh, is it is there a parallel there from the fact that as soon as you've left, if um, the amount of accidents is just shot through the roof? Hold on, hold on. We need to do the old uh, return of the Jedi. You know, got the <laughs> theme tune by guy. You know, hey, the master is back. You know, yeah. not a chance. The, no, force, I mean, the force is back in the building. Yeah, I mean, so. to be to be fair, I, I've not done any courses for for months and months and months and months. But what I am finding is I'm getting emails. Not every day, but I'm getting lots of emails. And just to run through very quickly the sort of 10 that seem to be the most common, if I may, um, PewTag have issued their information post-COVID, which is fine. But when it comes down to things like uh, saying to people that operators, of course, clean down with a 1,000 milligrams per litre of chlorine, that's stumping lots of people because they, they, they can't seem to calculate that a 1,000 milligrams is one gram. That, I mean, that's nothing to do with the industry, but uh, it, it's perplexing some people. Um, the power of chlorine with the pH, I think that is the perennial one now that we've put in place, which is brilliant, saying that you've got to drop your pH values to get your chlorine's working level. Um, obviously, I, I'm not up to it like you two lads have been with the sort of problems getting calcium hypochlorite and then the sodium hypochlorite factory closing down for a while. And people have uh, emailed and said, can I use sodium hypochlorite, although I'm on calcium hypochlorite? Um, use of CO2, I'm sure you two are getting that all the time now, um, using it with alkalinity levels and pH values. Um, temperatures, of course, they've been coming in all over the last month. Is it safe to drop the pool to 27 degrees and so on and so forth? Well, of course it is. Um, energy management, I know you two are heavily involved with it, but some on the energy management, vero speed drives, VSDs, and ultraviolet units. Now, a, a local authority a couple of years ago that I was working very closely with, their energy people had moved in and they'd put VSDs along through the automatic dosing units. Obviously, there are lots of um, available units on the market we'll say. And of course, the, the VSDs were kicking in overnight from the chlorine cell, and it neutralized the two UV units. And they literally had to have them replaced, because the water was so slow flowing through with the heat distribution in the unit, it literally blew them up. So we've got to be very careful with that. Um, backwash frequencies, I, I'm getting lots and lots of inquiries about that with obviously energy management and putting water down the drain, should it be going into grey settlement tanks and so on. Um, recently, a couple of days, splash pads, because it would appear a lot of splash pads are not being tested and they've got very limited filtration on them. And in America, I know where people are picking this up from on holiday in Florida and so on, that um, people are picking infections up from splash pads where kids are going in with nappies. Um, and, of course, they're taking water into the mouth and so on. Um, outdoor pools recently, a lot of outdoor pools domestically have come online because of school holidays. Um, cyanuric acid levels with the 200 gram trichlor, as we used to call them, tablets and not testing for cyanuric acid. Uh, and then the perennial one that you two know all about, that's the relationship between alkalinity and pH. Now, I, I promise you, having written those down, as you can see, that... Um, Mr. Men, yeah, I'm, not, I'm, not throwing the, <laughs> I'm not throwing the kids' stuff away yet. They're only 38 and 48. So, but um, they're the sort of questions, and I'm sure, you know, to build a sort of conversation around it, that they're sort of typical of what you're getting. Yeah, I mean, uh, certainly, um, 
a couple that you mentioned there, you know, you mentioned about energy saving and, and um, VSDs. I mean, I've just uh, put a couple of VSDs in a system uh, only last week. Well, not personally, I did the specification and Barn raided the, uh, the install for us, and it's a good, good install as well. Mm -hmm. But interestingly, there was another client asked about UV, and I spoke to ATG about it, and it was about uh, turning it off for just a few hours overnight. Um, and ATG actually came back and said that um, their systems are designed to do four lamp strikes a day. And mm. to be fair, I kind of got it because you do often switch them off as part of the backwash cycle. Yeah. yeah. So to, you know, I'm not saying on, off, on, off every five minutes, but to switch them <laughs> off for a period of, I don't know, midnight till three, four in the morning. So it comes on a couple hours before you open up and it's on for a couple hours after you shut um, to get that energy saving. So I don't know, four hours a day, let's say, you know, you think about seven days a week. So you're saving mm. about a day's worth of energy over a week. Yeah. So 52 days of the year. You know, you could be looking at anything at one and a half to three kilowatts an hour it's drawing. So I can kind of see the benefit of it. Um oh, right. Yeah, but that, that's powering it down mm. uh, on, on a plant. Yes. Then what we've got here is the VSD ramping back so much with no thought to the flow of water through the ultraviolet. That's That's the difference. Yeah. I mean, that's energy. There's been a huge push in it. And I read lots of articles about energy and, and we're going to save on this and save on that. But very mm. few of the articles coming from any of the operators or any of the systems are actually seeing how they're doing it, uh, which, is, yeah. which is the interesting part. They're not saying exactly, you know, what are they doing to curb it? Are they, you know, solar panels going thermal, mm. going air source heating? Mm. Um, you know, you mentioned one there, grey water tank systems. Fantastic idea. But retrofitting them nightmare because you might well catch this gray water and say to yourself right i've got this huge tank of backwash water i can now use it but then you've got to be able to put it into the system to flush toilets urinals um you know parts where you can use that gray water and it's that's not an easy plumbing job that is no, not an no, easy plumbing job no, no not no. at all um and in the same instance though you know there there i am uh, i mean and robin said it as well we're, commissioning a couple of new builds or certainly snagging them off and you, you look at them and say well have you got a green water system a gray water system have you got this have you got that no 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 and the, the common term you'll get is we value engineered it out the system yeah yeah yeah, yeah. what do you what do you think robin is that a common term absolutely i mean it's i <laughs> value engineered it out yeah i mean it's you're still getting debates about whether a pool cover is worthwhile yeah hmm. and going back to ian's point about the uv it's a good point but there is mileage and the, these systems are not going to go away it just depends on how they are performed or how they, they measure you know i think the one that you're talking about Ian measured it on the chlorine uh, consumption is that right yeah so uh the chlorine consumption was the trigger for the reduced flow but yeah we there's, there's mileage in that there's potential in that but it needs to be improved it needs to it needs to work yeah it's just like it's just like a chp chp yeah. is brilliant absolutely outstanding save you save you you know a good bit of energy some were some places that had chps combined heat and power units were selling uh, some of the power back to the national grid however see when it doesn't work it's no use mm. the maintenance mm. As a nightmare. It's VEA engine in uh, some of these units, Mercedes helicopter engines in some of these units. Mm. The maintenance on it can be astronomical. So and what it, what's interesting, you know, Robin, and Ian, obviously we, you you know we've just been out there, we're talking about this. It's more about having appreciation for the plan because there, me and Robin this week were well say last this week, last week we were at Isle of Man and Ian's been up to Isle of Man loads of times. Man, if you take yeah. the national centre of Isle of Man, it's slap bang next to the power station yeah. yeah and they are taking all of the excess heat uh from the power station and it was interesting i don't want to reveal figures but um they've got two huge turbines in the, the mm. power station and um the lad we were dealing with up there i say the lad uh, andrew good guy he um he, he actually showed us his bills and he said one of the turbines was down last month and we actually had to pay our own gas bill Ian. <laughs> but, uh, he they were and it was it was in the tens of thousands of pounds mm. for for one month i won't say exactly what the figure was 
um, but it was in the tens of the thousands of pounds for one month. Yeah. And it, it's it's there were I mean we're not talking a young building there. That was two thousand and one. The National Centre was built in um, Bell Man. Um, so twenty plus years ago, they've actually been quite sensible and said we can build this anywhere we want. But in actual fact, let's put it here. That's right. And draw the energy yeah. or the excess heat that's coming off the power station. And we're going to heat the pool, heat the showers, you know, heat this, heat that, heat all the rest of it, and have a, a free, um, you know, a free sort of heating cost, so to speak. Mm. I mean, yes, there will be times when they, they, they've got a turbine that goes down or they've got to do a bit of maintenance on the power station. They're always going to be that. But um, your best option is to, to go and build your swimming pool like they have done in Isla. That's my original birthplace. And that's, they've built, the swamp pool right next to the whiskey distillery yeah. and the excess yeah. heat from the whiskey distillery heats up the pool now the whiskey distillery will never go down they'll make <laughs> sure of that you know and you yeah. can kill two birds with one stone you're heating up your pool and you can get blathered at the same time it's brilliant yeah. that's I, I suggest that we build all our swamp pools next to whiskey distilleries <laughs> yeah or the other option is you could be a wee bit more but you can go and build them next to crematoriums you know? <laughs> so well that, that's an they option did that in Birmingham, really. they did that in yeah. Birmingham, but, yeah. but it, i think it, ian it's right what you say it's, it's the philosophy of understanding how you can reclaim heat or use heat second hand i mean the southampton keys when that was built 1997 i believe i was involved with that and and they use a chp and geothermal yes. and the chp southampton combined heat and power company next to toys r us uh, on, on west key so you know they, they're there or thereabouts but i don't think at the moment they mainstream although the way things are going with energy costs tens of thousands of pounds i think they're going to have to be mainstream soon but it's it's not so much i don't think uh the 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 installation of them it's how the operators pool operators understand the philosophy of them being used with conventional fuels well that's I'll, that's the questions i'm getting I'll, I'll i'll teach you a few little facts here that you may well may or may not know um aluminium takes an enormous amount of heat to be able to recycle mm -hmm. uh, enormous amount of energy to recycle and most aluminium in the world is actually smelted in Iceland. Okay. Oh, yeah. And the reason for that is because Iceland's power stations are all geothermal. Yeah. Where they pull it and yeah. they're geothermal. Yeah. Now, um, so a lot of the aluminium in the world is actually smelted in Iceland. But next to the main power station um, in Iceland is, and I think I might be wrong in this, it was at one point the largest pool in the world, but now it's the mm -hmm. second largest, I believe, mm -hmm. which is the Blue Lagoon, if anyone's at the the chance of going there which um, is a bit different but um in its widest point is 150 meters um which i've been to it's got it's, a, it's phenomenal it's got a 36 hour turnover time and it's uh, it uses silica so the water's milky white at all times so it doesn't use chlorine it uses silica so a bit bit strange and it's a bit of a strange feeling having silica in water um but it uses all of the excess heat uh, heated water off the power station and for many years, the water used to come off this power station and it flooded next to the power station, a lava field, and it created a natural lake of this white mm. water. And uh, the residents in Iceland used to drive down from Reykjavik because it's about 20 kilometers outside of Reykjavik and used to just swim in it and then go back. And many, many years ago, a guy bought it and put a fence around it and started charging the earth um, <laughs> as an attraction for this thing. And it's a you know it's it's not as if it's new technology that's what i'm trying to say mm. it's it's old school technology yeah. being used for a long long period and we should be sort of you know buying into this and developing into this now where now there's the mad panic um and in and and, and uh, moving forward uh in, in about five or six weeks i've um i'm having solar panels put onto my house and i'm having a mm. huge array put onto it um and um oversized on solar batteries and stuff i might actually do a little bit of a podcast on it um to sort of show you how the system works and mm. the principle of it but i have oversized the system like you wouldn't believe so my house will hopefully be off grid for electric completely yeah yeah um, yeah and, and 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 this this can be done this you know it can be done oh it can all, it can all be done i think with the energy cost today i mean even the lunchtime news today saying typical energy costs for a house in the uk january next year could be nearly four thousand pounds you know, for the yeah, year saying that, saying that, aren't they? yeah i mean just, you're you're just, just still on the same subject just quickly how does um 
energy prices compare in France? Is energy expensive also, or is it? Um... It is. Yeah. In fact, I've got to be honest. Only last week we had a letter from EDF, which is eighty-five percent nuclear energy for our electricity, mm. and we pay a standing charge of X pounds, well, X euros per month. And of course, because we've been here most of this year, they've let us know that we ought to be paying more. So by the end of the year, when everything's sort of totaled up, and so yes, it's exactly the same. There, there is a a watchdog looking at prices and saying, right, okay, fine, we would suggest you pay this, otherwise it's going to be a heck of a a, a problem to get to the end of the year. But um, but that, that's like everywhere, it's like everywhere. So eighty five percent, eighty five percent nuclear. Yeah, I mean. Uh, yeah. France must have a lot of renewable uh, capabilities. I mean, in Scotland, well, the the whole of Scotland can run on renewable energy. Now, mm. that's well, you know. I think France. The 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 last bill we got the fuel for our electricity. Uh, it's generated three percent from fuel. The rest right. of it is renewables and nuclear and so on. So, mm. it's good. It's good. Yeah. So, Ian, um, I mean, I'm sure um, we've sent you some of the articles, and I know you've seen some of them come across about the yeah. speed of uh, accidents that we've seen um, in in the UK uh, this year, in particular. Um, I know me and Robin's got some of our own thoughts and feelings on as to possibly why or or, or, or whatever it might be. And um, we're interested. We're actually working on a, a small project with um, a few different organisations, hopefully, which might be announced something later later down the line hopefully towards the end of the year what we're doing with that um but um have you got any i mean most of them there's been about sort of 15 16 now in the press mm. um and there's there's quite a few that we're aware of that didn't make the press um i mean most of them are day tank mixing to be honest yeah yeah um yeah. a few problems on delivery have you got any other further thoughts or anything you'd add to to why you think maybe yeah it's well i mean the, the first thought well, when i see this when you had to send it me and putag send it me and i pick it up on, on my own on the internet that the first thing that comes across having been so long in training development and consultancy is once again back to the training that uh, uh, okay we do a three-day a 25-hour poor plant course whatever which is brilliant courses whichever ones we do uh, in the majority but at the same time it's the application back on site and what i what i am finding now to help with the training that i'm sure you two do it along with ios and palm and so on is the ptop to try and get up to a sort of poor mark standard and the number of poor plant rooms you go into on poor plant courses where they would not pass a ptop for inspection uh, and i think it's it's not so much the training we deliver which i still stand by of having done it for so long but at the same time it's when they get back to site where because they're a duty manager they're expected to know the poor plant uh, and recently i've had people say to me can we put cal hypo into a sodium hypochlorite tank well the risk assessment would say wash it out first and then of course you can but at the same time it's it's this this knowledge that used to be there on site that's no longer there Do you know, and, and the youngsters that that's why they're feeling vulnerable sorry Ian. Yeah. It's, no it's, i was going to say it's interesting you say this because the way i always sort of sometimes broach this i say look you come on your three-day course and you, you pass your driving test right so you learned at this car but then you go home and you buy your first car mm. and it's slightly different and it's a bit like i don't know if you guys have had this before when you jump in a rental car it feels completely different you know when you jump in that um sort of car for, when you've been on holiday for two weeks and you haven't driven and you have to get back in your own mm. car and it's like that you, you learn on one system when you go away your course typically not your own pool because you've yep. traveled somewhere yep. um and you've got to try and imagine it and compare it but then when you get back to your own site you've then got to try and apply the generic principles because for anyone who does teach pool plant courses potentially you've got what 16 people in the room from usually about 10 to 12 different sites because some of them will be from the same sites mm -hmm. all throwing questions at you about saying but our pool but our pool we've got this we've got this you're trying to get through a syllabus answer their questions um within three days with a manual usually it's about 250 300 pages long um it's a difficult mm -hmm. task it's not an easy win is it it's not but it's, it's it's as i say when 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 people get back to site that that's what i'm finding um recently a couple of emails paul's starting up again for the summer and the emails say 
Ian, what's the difference between sodium hydrogen sulfate and sodium bisulfate? <laughs> because we've, had, we've, had, we've used sodium bisulfate for years and years and years, and suddenly we've been delivered sodium hydrogen sulfate. Are they compatible? And when you say they're the same chemical, yeah. uh, that, that's that's where I know it sounds being super critical, but I'm not. And it's it's like same cal calcium hypo that they just some people just call it shock treatment. Yes, they they, they, they use sodium hypochlorite for their ordinary chlorination, but then they shock it with calcium hypochlorite, and they, they don't know what it is. And that's the sad fact that I'm not pointing a finger at anybody, I promise you, sincerely. But they're the big problems I think we've got in the industry now, which are leading to some of these accidents mm -hmm. around disinfection, acids being mixed, and, and so on and so forth. But, I honestly believe that. Well, you know, we, spent, we spent two days on site last week, and the primary aim of that visit was to create a PTOP. Mm -hmm. Now, they've mm -hmm. got... They've got highly skilled guys on site but they wanted they wanted to create a ptop that reflected best practice mm. so we're, we're 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 going to be using the images we're going to be using diagrams so it's, it's a pick pick up the ptop you know how do you how do you clean out your your calcium hypochlorite dosing yeah. unit and there it is you know how do you calibrate your Wallace and Tiernan uh, automatic mm. controller there it yeah. is how do you clean the strainer basket? There it is. Mm. And, I, and I think it's not just the fact that we need to show people how to do the job. We need to inspire confidence. Exactly. Because these people are lacking confidence yeah. because they're going on a pool plant course and they're expected to be all knowing and all wise. Yeah. But uh, I think after coming, now I'm good. I'm a good shooter, but I'm not that good, <laughs> right? Yeah, but I, th I think but the you, industry you know, has changed so much that sometimes when they go back off a PPO course, that they're the only person on site dealing yeah. with the poor plant. And that's that's a sad reflection of our oh. industry. Once again, uh, having you know been in the industry for so long that, I mean, I remember the guys that taught me, God bless them. But at the same time, you now go back to a site where the, the, the longest serving member of staff has been there three months uh, yeah. or something of that ill. Well, once again, it's not a blame culture or a blame game. It's just the way that our industry has changed. Yeah, it has changed. And you know what? It, it's interesting because um, the, obviously the site we were at last week, they still had traditional maintenance guys on yes. site. Yeah, doing, doing in the plant room. Uh, they had more than one as well. So obviously you yeah. had the holy cover. And, um, you know, it, it reminded me of when I, back in the 90s, was running a 50-meter pool and I had an electrician, a plumber, a fitter, <laughs> uh, an apprentice electrician and two handymen. Um, and that, I mean, this was on a, six, a 50 meter pool with yeah, yeah. a big teaching pool, and it was a huge facility. Um, and it, it was great, but then if you rewind back to a previous pool, was that we did have one maintenance guy at the pool, which he was a good guy. And um, because of certain jobs, often I'd he'd come and get me, I'd have to foot the ladder, or I'd have to, mm. um, you know, hold this up while he sort of marks it out. and, and and I was, uh, that pen's probably what's well, why I'm probably very mechanically minded that I was always, I mean, I'm going back to when I was sort of 16, 17, I was always dragged away and um, uh, we had a, a very traditional, uh, he was a plumber by trade as well, this guy. Mm. Um, yeah, same with me, same with me. So it, yeah. it, it, it's, an, it's an interesting one as well, so. I, th I think it is as, as pools are getting older as well. I know there's some brilliant new pools on the market, so to speak. I mean, Birmingham, you know, visually this week, last week was brilliant. I mm -hmm. mean, Richard Lambert was involved with that uh, a lot. But I mean, some of the older pools now that can't match today's uh, sort of expectations, that's where, dare I say, the old engineer or the technical guy would make his or her money because they knew exactly how that building ran. You know, it's like running a classic car they knew how it ran but i mean you know things have to move forward and i appreciate that uh, but at the same time i think what you you know what you lads are doing with the skills cards and so on that's what we need yeah i think as well in the other thing which it's when you think about training is and is that people learn so differently now yes they, yes. they learn completely differently as you say before it would have been you know acetate it's an overhead projector yeah to turn the lights <laughs> on a little bit and the overhead projector probably had bloody uh, radiation <laughs> coming off the damn thing <laughs> and started it up. And then, and, and I even remember, and this will make you laugh, but guys, um, I remember using an overhead projector and getting that notorious ping <laughs> and the bulb goes yep. partway yeah. through the lesson. Or even better, you've been, you've been talking for 20 minutes 
and the the acid has been the wrong way round. Yeah, and he's bent at the corners, <laughs> held down like, the coins. Hold on a wee minute. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. the, you're reading it backwards, you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> I, even, I, even, I even remember you'd, I'd, I used to have this folder, you know, the acetates in, uh, and you'd have to carefully put them back in order. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you had, like, a full folder and an empty folder, and you kind of transferred them across to the other folder. That's yep. how I used to do it. I have, like, two yeah. folders on the go. Well, I mean, not not to dwell on it, obviously, but I mean, I mean, I remember when we used to have the old slides, the old Kodak slides. You took the photographs, sent them to develop, be developed, <laughs> and they came back on a slide. Yeah. And you had the carousel, and if the carousel yeah. stuck, that was it. End of story. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm not one of that. I know what you're talking about, but I've yeah. never talked about. Well, one of we it. had those. We had those. Yeah. Anyway, bye bye. And but as you say, learning has changed, and it can only be for the better. I mean, I. I, I Okay, I might be brilliant at chemistry and water treatment in swimming pools, but I am useless at renovation, hence sat in my house in France. And I go on YouTube now, I must admit, because I was doing some plastering the other day. Okay, it's not brilliant, but I honestly learned it on YouTube. And it's it's a skill that you learn. Well, so if you two, if you two are producing videos and, yep. and templates and, and, and skills cards, power to you. It's, it's the way forward. No doubt about it. Robin, yeah, we Robin, are indeed. Not me. Uh, we are indeed. I've got uh, GoPros and lights, and you know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm Mister George Lucas these days. You know, it's quite apt that we've got Return of the Jedi on the day. You know, because I'm feeling <laughs> like a film director. These... No, you're right. Listen, yeah, uh, I've got three kids in the house, and if I ask one of them, you know, to go and do something, and they're not sure how to do it, the first thing they do is they go into YouTube, yeah, and they find out how to do it. You know, that's and we. Whether we like it or not, that is how kids learn these it's days. And it has, it's instant. They need to mm. see it instantly. Mm. And mm. see if you give them uh, an SOP that's like a page of writing. If I was to give that to my 17-year-old, be like, what's this? You know, mm. is this mm. for to use in the toilet? No, no, this is what you need to do. You know, yeah. <laughs> no, he'll go into YouTube, bang, 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 right, yeah. all right, now I know what's needed. No, okay, but, I, but I think you've still got to understand the principles behind it. Oh, I. And that's, I think that's where we come in as Ian Sonny, the training or what have you. Oh, so you, it's, it's a mix and match now. It's, oh, it's wait, good. You're it's right. Good. Procedures don't give understanding. Procedures are just the what. And it's extremely important. And this, is, this goes back to the very original point about people making mistakes. You can have all the procedures you want, but if you don't have appreciation and mm. understanding of the why then people will still make mistakes well, exactly. because they will I mean, cut corners. They will cut corners. If we don't understand the consequences or the reasons behind, guys, by the way, see if you mix that chemical. You could be endangering your own life. Yeah. And you, if they don't yeah. understand that that rationale and the importance of being very, very particular and thorough, then you'll still end up with problems. Yeah. Joey, interestingly, um, a lot of pools are struggling for staff. Just about every pool you talk mm. to, I know your son works in the leisure industry as well. I don't know. Obviously, I don't know if he's struggling for staff, but a lot of them are struggling for staff. Yeah. And, I, and I think we've found that uh, maybe COVID has kind of accelerated people's retirement plans. Not not yours. For the, last, <laughs> for the last ten years, you were going to be this time next year, lads. I will be. I said, I'm I'm jacking it all in. I'm jacking it. That's all I've heard. Yeah. Crack last on it. Crack on quickly. Crack on. <laughs> um, the wife um, will be listening to this later. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Um, on a serious note, I think a lot of people. Uh, Accelerated the retirement plans, you know. Um, you know, uh, you know, we've got a, a colleague of ours, Fergus, who got offered mm. earlier. Runs, he went, Yep, yeah, let's take it. I'm gone, you know. I mean, obviously, he's still working, he's changed his mm. career. Mm. Um, but I think it accelerated a lot of people's retirement plans, and those people left quite quickly. And maybe the skills, the knowledge wasn't handed on, or there wasn't anyone to hand it on. And, and notoriously, no, I mean, the demand on pool plant courses just now is just ridiculous. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, even I had one the other day there. Um, I, um, a lead, well, you know, Pauline Stewart, don't you? Pauline Stewart. Oh, I do very well. Yeah, yeah Paul. Yeah, and um, she contacted me the day that Ian, I need a course for six people, but unfortunately, uh, we can't release them because we're so short staffed, we're gonna have to do it in small mini batches. Um, it just because they're there, and her words to me were, um, Ian. And I, I know you'll understand this as many of the listeners were. We're so short-staffed, I've had to don the yellow and red. 
<laughs> That's what she actually said to me. I've had to yeah. don the yellow and yeah. red. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, but coming back to the training, uh, I mean, I'm sure you two have seen it because you two are heavily involved with writing the skills cards, which I think are marvellous today. But at the same time, w without the sort of um, compliments, that, I mean, I've been into sites when we long many times ago before even before pete mills um started uh in terms of making quests when it was 5750 and we worked together for a short period of time writing risk assessment for ios and so on isrm that i went into to a pool in greater manchester where the guy had got written procedures for doing a backwash and what have you brilliant and he was very good at it but halfway down the page it said issue 14 or whatever push big red button on wall so, of course, he pushed it, and then three or four instructions later, push big red button on wall. So he pushed it. It wasn't connected to anything. It, it was, had been, the air blower right. for the filtration <laughs> backwash. But the air blower had been moved when they did a refurbishment, but no one had thought to rewrite the PTOP for it. So, of course, it was part of the procedure, so it was done. Yeah, and I'm sure you two have seen exactly the same. So... That's where the understanding comes in, isn't it? That's it. Yeah, understanding is what you mean. You've got it. Yeah, and that's that's why we still need the courses, the understanding of it. That's why you're still getting twenty emails a day. To be fair, Ian, the place we were in last week, me and Robin, they actually asked us to look at their their backwash procedure since the system had been altered from refurb. Yeah, and the 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 company that refurbed it had altered the system. I changed uh, the backwash procedure slightly, but they were mm. still in the old one because they wouldn't comment yeah. if the new one would yeah. work. Yeah. So we gave it to Robin and he gave it a quick run through in his head, walking around the plant, seeing where water was going. And it did, it works. But you know what? You didn't have the confidence to change. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. Even yeah. though yes. the system updated. But that, that was but, but interesting. That a lot. Yeah. It does. A lot. I mean, the thing is, the guy was the charge hand engineer guy was absolutely amazing, brilliant. Mm. All the experience. But you're right, that's where the, the understanding comes in. And there's a bit, you know, and maybe a reluctance to change because there's a wee bit of fear of, you know, well, you know, of we've done it this way. But, yeah. that, but, you know, I mean, even even Chris uh, last week when we were going, he was doing a water test and I was taking images and I was saying, I would maybe, well, try it this way, you know. And he's like, oh, yeah, you're joking. That's quite good, you know. And he's like, <laughs> oh, wow, you know. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Holy yeah. shit, someone's managed to teach me something. I'm like, oh, you know, I, no. I've been yeah, around but, a wee bit myself, you know. But um, but these guys have got so much knowledge. But, oh, you know, it's just a pity we, you couldn't transfer that and then take oh, them well. out of their comfort zone mm. and take them somewhere mm. else for the day. Mm. And then they could Because mm. like, these guys have got a fantastic capacity for learning as well. You know, but that's you're, you're, the understanding's got to be there, isn't it? Well, that's right. But I, I was uh, I was putting some graphs together oh, a few months ago when I was in England, putting some graphs together from some water test kits. You know, the Palin Test Nine, and Palin uh, Test Twenty Five, and what the operatives didn't realise was that you can check the last thirty tests. Uh, well, it's the last hundred, it's the last hundred oh, tests. Yeah, yeah. On, on the log. So I yeah. did it and plotted a graph on site. And I'm not joking. It was just like a ma just like a, a mountain <laughs> range. And I presented it to the manager. I said, look, this is what your pH is doing now. And he said, oh, no, our pH is always 7272. I said, no, it's not. And we went through the log sheets, and it was. Yeah. But you've come from the test kit, and it's not. Mm -hmm. And you think, hang on. You know, there's, a, there's as you're saying, there's a comfort zone here. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I, I'm not saying anybody would mislead anything at all, but at the same time, it's the understanding that oh, it's not seven point two. What what shall I do about it? Uh, uh, Ian, I, I don't know if you saw this in the press, but did you see that? Um, uh, I should have sent. I don't think I sent you actually. Did you see that uh, in Germany, all public buildings have got to stop heating water? Yeah, and it, it meant that uh, showers <laughs> were were averaging. And bear in mind that it's pre swim showering in Germany. Yeah. But um, it was something silly. I was reading that they reckon that the showers were averaging something like 17 degrees <laughs> at the pre swim shower. <laughs> well, at least it'd be warm when they jump in the pool. Yeah. Uh, I bet you know, I know one will be complaining about the temperature of the pool now. <laughs> that, did, that did make me chuckle. Listen, Ian, as well. Uh, yep. So, what do you do now to keep yourself busy? Are you still you're still dabbling with pools slightly and still getting lots I, and loads of emails to come I, I am more I am more than dabbling. Um yeah, obviously it's 
dare I say, I'm never going to get out of the industry. I mean, that is a fact. I, I love Look, it. Too I, much. I can see Maureen behind you with a baseball bat. No, 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 no. <laughs> put the head down. Um, no, I, I will still do because obviously at the moment we've got registration in France, residency as we call it, mm -hmm. but we'll always be back and forth to the UK. I've still got the house in, in workshop. Uh, but at the same time, I, I'm quite happy doing what I'm doing here. And you'd say, what do I do? Well, you can see the house behind me. That I'm always renovating something or other. I sent you the photographs last week. Yeah, I can test them to that. I often get yeah, updated yeah. pictures. That's it. And so that. And I've just boiled beetroot for tea. I've picked the tomatoes and so on. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> it's, I, I don't know. that After 50-odd years of doing it, I don't miss being on the road. Ah, I, I don't that. miss checking into a hotel at 6 o'clock at night and then wondering what I'm going to deal for the rest of the night. Now, don't get me wrong. 25 years ago, 30 years ago, it was brilliant. But now I, I'm enjoying spending time, you know, with her ladyship. So, so yeah. but the, the, the boys are still sponges. So, no. We'll still, we'll still bother you with emails. And and that's that's we'll... fine. I mean, uh, just to explain, I was at the pool yesterday uh, because I've got, there's an English builder who's been doing a bit of work at my house. Very nice guy, Lee Moore, his name, a smashing guy. And obviously he's doing work for English people who have got pools. Now, some of these people let pools out as part of their jeet hire, and some people have just got them in the back garden. And I was at a, a guy's pool yesterday, very close to us, and he's just putting in the 200 gram triclor tabs, as I call them. Uh, and then, of course, he's wondering why the pH is dropping through the floor. But then in our supermarkets over here, different to the UK, you can buy pH plus and pH minus stood next to each other on shelf. You can buy shock chlorine stood next to those two on the shelf. I mean, they're all powders, but at the same time, some of the test kits, I went into a pool store the other day, a, a particular pool store, they don't do any testing for cyanuric acid mm -hmm. over here, even though yesterday this guy got chlorine lock, his pool had turned green suddenly, simply because he's putting the tablets in and he's shocking it with trichlor tabs. Oh. Well, of course, the, the cyanuric acid is going through the roof. So it's, it's a bit of a learning curve for them. Uh, and they're, they're more than happy because they are making money renting the pools. But I've been involved recently with a, an above ground pool that they've dropped into the ground. And of course, the ground water in winter, they emptied the pool and it pushed the walls in. So they've had to breeze block the walls. And so, we, you know, we're talking about putting a new pool in there. So, so yes, I'm keeping my hand in. Don't worry. So Don't worry. In interestingly, I was talking to our friend Chris Hayes the other day. They're on that because they're, right, yeah. they're releasing a fact sheet on it at Sparta. Mm. Um, um putting a, a above ground pooled in ground they're actually producing a fact sheet on mm. it there's mm. a few that have done that now yep that's right so do they in france do they put the empty bucket in the pool when they just in case it freezes have they got have they got oh, that uh, no yeah and they still oh, they don't still do that. That? yeah still the potential still that. for that to yeah. happen is that yeah oh, oh yeah brilliant yeah oh, very good yeah. very good oh it's good i mean i mean the plants uh, don't get me wrong uh, this this one i went to yesterday the pool plant has been installed brilliantly but then the first call I got sort of four or five weeks ago was because it's surrounded by pine trees and the pine needles have got in the skimmer and got in the sump. And of course, they've got through the uh, through the strainer and blocked the impeller. So I had to strip all the pump assembly down and, and sort that out. But then he's got a vac point and he wasn't sure of the valve position. And so he was circulating the pool through the vac point and wondering why the deep end wasn't clearing up. Uh. Because uh, so, it was you know, all, it was going out and then coming straight back. Coming straight back in. <laughs> but they're the sim they're the simple things that, yeah, yeah. that you've you've got to start start and understand. So yes, yes. So I'll always be involved in, and if yeah. I'm in the UK, then I don't mind doing the odd course. But the fact is that I'm retired. I'm retired. Ian, Ian is available in France. For, um, <laughs> yeah, let's just say the payment is either red or white. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't come in a box no no it, it does yeah three yeah. liters yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no not several, at all several not bottles at all. in the box yeah I, I i mean back back to the plot are you, are you still getting questions about alkalinity and ph yes because yeah. I, I would imagine every 10 questions i get at least three Do you know are it, around ph and alkalinity it, interestingly um we were helping one of our clients uh, on it who's going to event longer term put in a um a day tank a bicarb yeah and just yeah force it in very very slowly but because right, i've recommended yeah 
yeah because of short staff shortages and various other things it's just not happened yet and it's due to happen and um they were battling with the bicarb you know mm -hmm. levels the alkalinity levels sorry um to get it up and up and up and um <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you another funny story in a second so they're battling with the alkalinity levels to get this level you know up and up and up and up yeah and um he was getting it he was getting it up wasn't he rob and he was bringing the levels slightly up but unfortunately because of all the other commitments and short staffed he's kind of just not at the time mm. so the levels have slipped all the way back down um so that we still get lots of questions of it and it, you know the bicarb doesn't work well, how are you dosing it when you dosing it how you put it in how much you put it in mm. um 25 meter pools another one i get all the time i put in one scoop yeah. one scoop a night all right let's let's see the scoop so you just chuck that straight in yeah don't dissolve it down mm -hmm. um and I, I think they don't necessarily there's a, a on the same subject there's a fascination still with langelia um yes yeah that yeah you, you, they're fighting for the figures and i don't know about robin but certainly when i always teach a course and i do talk about the germans what they do when i finish doing the calculation of the pool in the course I always rework the figures again using a 6.6 mm. 6 pH mm. the Germans and just say, look, it's physically impossible. All their water is corrosive. You know, it doesn't matter yeah. what you do. When you put a pH level 6.6 .6 in this equation. Yeah. Well, well I, to a certain extent, I'm the same. I say, don't follow the number zero. Mm. Look at the figures and see which, yeah. which each individual figure, where is it? Uh, and, and it's the same with, with flocculants. There are a lot of people using PAC. I mean, you two have seen my famous experiment. I'm sure you do it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you when you put the PAC in, then lift the just, alkalinity level, yeah. and put the alkalinity in, and it works. And there are still a number of pools that they will get in touch saying, "We're using flocculant. Well, how much are you using? I don't know. Well, how quickly does it go down in a day? Oh, we never measure it. So they haven't got a clue how much they're putting in when the pew tag sort of code of practice. And then what's your alkalinity level? Oh, it's fifty. As well, your PAC is going in, but nothing's happening with it. And it's, it's the, chemi the chemical understanding, which I know we cover on courses. I know we cover. They're, they're the sort of things, for both of you, that I, I'm still getting now. Well, as, as well, you know, still, still in the PAC vein, you, you walk in, Ian, and there's 10 barrels. Yeah. You see. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you say, well, let's have a look at the batch date. It lasts about four months before you start yeah. to lose its potency. Yeah. Two year supply. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Big exactly. windows, uh, chemical companies seen them. Eh? <laughs> yeah. That's the but sort I mean, of thing. Yeah. yeah. What What about your backwashing frequencies? What What has changed? Is anything changing because of energy? I know we instead of backwashing two or three times a week, because I, I, I had a pool recently. They've moved on to sodium hypochlorite from calcium because they couldn't get calcium, and the TDS have shot through the roof. Yeah. So yeah. they literally they literally doing a backwash for the filters once a week and a backwash to get rid of TDS once a week yeah when you, when you point out how much water they're wasting i say what's your flow meter reading ah oh, we don't have a flow meter uh, yeah. and you know th this is beginning to to make a, a big difference to finance now i think um I th well i think there's a couple of points there i think key is one is is for me i, I always say look don't you don't have to backwash but you don't have to just just waste because you're just yeah oh, yeah the, yeah you, Scrubbing yeah. the sand, scrubbing the sand, scrubbing the sand. Yeah, yeah. Um, thinking about the sample then going to waste. Uh, thinking about doing it nice and slowly so you can just open the air bleed so you don't get that sudden drop in temperature as well because mm. it's easier for the, the, mm. the heat exchange. The three port valve doesn't have to activate as much, um, you know, just to maintain the temperature up. Yeah. Um, I've had questions about cutting the backwash short. You know, our procedure says 10 minutes, kind of drop it to eight. Well, it's about the sight glass, it's not about the minutes. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> They're obsessed yeah. with these minutes all the time. Mm. Um, I don't know if there's any one that have actually completely cut the backwash, as in maybe dropped to once a fortnight rather than once a week. Um, certainly there's none that's sort of come clean. I know there's a couple of clients that have certainly dropped pool temperatures, which mm. is mm. mentioned. that's mm. happened. I don't know if Robin's got any that have actually physically... I think the back... I think that, to be honest, I think the backwash... Um, process is probably the least or last on the list of things that they'll compromise to save yes. energy. Yeah. That's yeah. that's what generally what I've been getting. It's more they'll look at things like UV first, 
they'll look at uh, temperature, they'll look at can we, is there heat recovery that we can do, you know, you know, can mm. we use less chemical? I think, I think mo people have been really preoccupied with the chemical shortage. Yes. The, pr the price of chemicals that the energy is probably secondary at the moment. I think mm. that will change. Mm. I think January next year, you know, swimming pools will probably look at their budgets coming up. But a lot of them will be kind of March to April and they'll be looking at it thinking, do you know what? Jesus, look at that. We're going to have to budget, you know, nearly 100% more in energy costs for the year coming. We can't, mm. we can't afford And that's when, that's when it'll, they'll, they'll, they'll be drastic measures. measures but, True. You know, I mean, you, obviously, you, you kind of know, I mean, pre, well, 12 months ago, whatever, you'd have got a barrel of hypo for about 13, 15 yeah. quid, 30, 35 quid now. It's mm. mental, Ian, it's mental. Yeah. Just well, I was to, talking to Nick Skelhorn on Jersey, yeah. and he was saying they had a delivery of calcium hypochlorite, uh, I think he said over £400 a barrel. Hell of a lot of money. I, 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 I just, just uh, pass on my number to Nick. Uh, like, uh, <laughs> I, I might be able to get him some. Uh, no, morning, you know? it's, it's funny because I am. Um, I found a barrel uh, on a on a website. I didn't buy it or anything, but I posted because I was astounded. It was seven hundred and thirty nine yeah. quid for yeah. a, it was um was it Procal? I think it was Robin. Was it? Uh, Procal, I think. Oh, um, it's frightening. Frightening. Seven, but and it was three ninety nine delivery. <laughs> well, three pounds ninety nine or three hundred and ninety nine. No, three pounds ninety nine for delivery for a twenty five kilogram bucket. Yeah, it's, it's um, yeah. I mean, I think Al Clint is still getting sort of hammered. I mean, just now, uh, I'm trying to think that I, I, I just think there's a poor understanding of it that people <laughs> think alkaline and alkalinity are the, are the same, same thing. thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't realise that one is. You know, measuring on the pH scale and looking at hydrogen, and the other is looking at the um, you know bicarbonate salt level oh, in um, in the solution, basically. I and think uh, they're also chasing figures, Ian. Yes. You know, yes. They're, they're chasing figures, and that you know, for example, in soft water area in Scotland, especially with the new pH range at seven to seven two, they're struggling to get the pH down. Uh, because carbon dioxide is not strong mm. enough, they might, you know, they might be losing some of it in the atmosphere because it might be, you know, there, there could be, you know, agitated water in some shape or form. Yeah. Yeah. But they're also trying to keep their their alkalinity about 110, 120. And I just hate them. Listen, see if you can get 70, 75, 70. Just mm. go over that. That's mm. because mm. it's needed more for coagulation mm. than than it is for pH bounce. Because the, to be honest, the equipment that we've got these days is is fantastic. The automatic uh, controllers, the probes, the automatic dosing systems that we've got react very quickly now. That they can maintain the pH comfortably. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's more yeah. it's more the coagulation that is a concern for me. And really, if you can maintain your alkalinity above twenty uh, above seventy, then the alkalinity will work. You know, exactly. and yeah. the, the coagulation yeah. will work. But it's when they start chasing, because all, all they end up doing is raising the pH. The bisulfate daytime empties overnight. That's and, it. You know, and, and it's a one. vicious circle, TDS through the roof. I agree. And, and they start. I so they need. I agree. And, it, and it's, it's, this is where understanding is so mm. important because mm. people mm. will just look mm. at a book, a manual, and it'll say 80 to 120. Right, we better aim for it's that 120. That. You've got it. And yeah. you're like, no, listen, yeah. you know, you need to be a bit more cute, a bit more smarter and try and, you know, it's like your car, isn't it? Your car doesn't, you know, you go and service your car, but sometimes it needs wee tweaks here and there. And it doesn't all, you know, there's no standard all the time that you run a, no. sw a swimming pool to. No. But you've just no. got to try and get into the gut set and understand it and take care of it. And well, it's true. But it's give it to TLC. Give it to yeah. LC. Yeah. yeah, it's like we were saying sort of half an hour ago, is yeah. that the, the training on courses is superb, still is. But it's when you go back to your pool, and it's, as you say, Robin, it's your characteristics of your pool. Scottish pools will work differently to pools down in Kent and so on. And But it's that, that's that been the main sort of question since pandemic on the balance of the pH and the alkalinity. And then recently, with pools going over to sodium hypochlorite, 
from calcium hypochlorite. Some pools have had a nightmare on that. But it's it's the understanding of it back on site, as you say, chasing the figures on yeah. Langelia. Yeah. 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 Do you know, Ian, as well, partly the, the nightmare of sodium hypochlorite has been some very unscrupulous sources of sodium hypochlorite, mm -hmm. shall we say, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. some quite inferior products. Yeah. Um, and um, that, yes, it will work. Yes, you can use it in a pool. Of course, it does. Yeah. But it, it, it it's not it's not the same. No, no. But but once again, it's the understanding of it again of what you're putting into your pool. Mm. I mean, it, it you know it's, it's the same as what's in your fridge. You know, you can buy milk from all sorts of different places, and of course, it comes from all sorts of different sources now: soya milk, cow's milk, goat's milk, the lot. But at the same time. What you're putting into your pool, you've got to understand it at your pool. Sure. That's that's the important thing. Ah, it's daft things. People will be buying sodium hypochlorite from wherever they can get it. Yeah, right? and it might be a an agricultural source, right? It could well be, yeah. right? But they use sodium hypochlorite like bleach for cleaning, yes. disinfecting, yes. Yeah, right? And it's for surface cleaning, right? Yeah. So it doesn't really matter whether it's been sitting there for six months no. or, or eight months. You know, if it's 5%, then they just need to use a bit more of it, right? But see, when you use, you know, sodium hypochlorite like that, if you were to buy it and it was six months old, seven months old, and you're only getting 5% chlorine, you're bathing in that. And mm. that comes mm. with, you know, the people are in the water and you start to get high chlorine levels, you start to get high bromate levels, and that's a concern. And mm. the TDS starts to shoot through the roof. Yeah, people really don't understand why that's happening because they're like, it's sodium hypochlorite. Well, it is, but its application is slightly different. Yeah, but it's, so, you know, you know, it's only sodium hypochlorite in name only. Yes. And, and people, are that, you know, so there is, the, these are all issues that people are, are suffering yeah. from because of the, the lack of chemical in the country. Yeah. You well, know, well, that's but the that's why they, sorry, that's the relevance of these chats. Yeah, I'll, I'll bet, exactly. I'll bet exactly. People listen, people listen to this, apart from the, the bit on France, that they might pick up one little bit of an idea from the last hour and think, ha, I can apply that. Yeah. That that's the important thing. That's or, why they're so valuable. Or even Ian, ah, that's why our TDS shut up with that hypo that we got last week yeah, from, from, so. from, from, from Bob so. of the market. <laughs> <laughs> that's is why we need to re re return of the Jedi more often. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's good. It's good. That's four o'clock. You know, we've, you that's know, it. We've just Gone. Been gabbing, just been gabbing. Yeah. Five, it's good. Five o'clock with ears. <laughs> yeah, five o'clock. The, yeah, beer, the beer is boiled over. No, no, no. The beer is off now. We've got to yeah. peel it now. <laughs> it's the homemade yeah. gin that he's got to watch for, you know. No, not <laughs> any chance. No, 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 no. no. I, um, just another one, very quickly. Go on. Um, Pew tag. I was part of it, so I, I'm culpable as well. Uh, have you had any queries about what a thousand milligram per litre means, cleaning channels and transfer channels? I, I've had them, not recently, but in the last sort of three or four months, where people still don't understand how much a thousand milligrams per litre is. When I send an email back and say it means one gram per litre, then I try to explain, say, put one litre of water in a bucket, put one gram of chlorine. Mm. Now, the only query I've got is from Pewtag, is that weighting water chlorine or concentration of chlorine? Oh, if it's no. weighting water, it's straightforward. If it's concentration times by 100 divided by 65, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But they're, they're the queries. But having, having said that, that's my query. But their query is, what is 1,000 milligrams? No, well, it's, not, it's, it's one gram. Well, I, if it was me, I would be... I would be associating it with the chlorine level, the actual concentration. Concentration, because, yeah. Because if you do, if you were to do a, an actual water test, and you had a, a photometer, or you were able to, mm. you know, get it analysed, and you wanted a thousand milligrams per liter, a thousand milligrams per liter is actual the free available chlorine, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, so that's the concentration. Yeah. Um, but it, do you know what? Just go by this up here. <laughs> it's just it's uh, Ian, uh, do you know what I mean? It's I know it's there, but I mean it, I just go tell people to use a product. I know they yeah. don't like to do it, you know, and just but the one one thing one I thing mean, that it shows is that people are reading the Pew Tag Code of Practice. It does that's the good news. 
And when I've had quite a few queries of that about the, the calculations of it. And I've worked through it. I said, look, when you're using Domestus on a Sunday afternoon when you've done the pots, how much Domestus do you put in? And they say, well, we'd put two or three squirts in. I said, well, do that when you clean it. <laughs> I know. it's uh, the, the problem you've got is it encourages people to start becoming mad scientists because they well, have exactly. to measure stuff exactly. out now. Exactly. You know, like, but, and they're spilling it, and it's like, well, no, 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 no. That's, what we, you know, that's what we used to do. Like that, and, like and, that. And, that's, oh. and that goes back to saying about, you know, having engineers on site. But well, that's that's for another podcast. I that know, is. Aye, yeah. Aye. Yeah. Aye. yeah. Yeah. So. And but, you, you, you do know that. You're in the company of two PewTag directors now. Yes, I did know. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. So if I was on PewTag, then I'd still be a minion. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Create, Excellent. Well we, done. We create the position of T boy. <laughs> yeah. El yeah. Gray. Yeah. El Gray. Yeah. El Gray. Yeah, it's great news. It's, it's good that you're moving it forward. Yep. Well, right. I, think, I think that's this for this episode. So, Ian, okay. it's great to join you. And if you listen, well, thank if you for you, invite. If you do come back to the UK in September, then certainly let us know because it would be great to meet up and okay. then just have a, I don't know, go for a pint or go for something to eat, something like that. A curry. A cur <laughs> yes, a curry. I like a curry, actually. Yeah. yeah but, on yeah. the Isle of Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If Robin remembers his ID. Oh, oh yeah. yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Do you know, well, uh, here's the irony, right? So I'm driving down, right? And I've uh, I've, I've borrowed, I've taken my wife's car instead of mine. So I'm driving down and I'm, I'm down at Southway. So I'm about two and a half hours yeah. from home. And I'm like, I go to Southway Services. That was the first place I yeah. stopped at. And then I'm like... He phoned me. I'm like, where's my wallet? And I'm like, oh, in the name of the wee man. <laughs> so I phoned him straight away and I'm like calculating. I can't get back there and even if my wife left straight away to bring my driver's license down yeah. i mean she'd have got to liverpool at four o'clock the flight was at quarter past i'm like that's Oof. yeah you yeah. know so so i was like right what am i going to do so i looked at it and there's the ferry i can get the ferry okay then i'll take the ferry i'll just get the flight back the next day mm. so i drove back up to oh, outside glasgow and my wife met me halfway yeah. so so she met me halfway and then uh, i drove back down <laughs> To Liverpool. Jesus. Never got checked for my ID in the ferry. No. Across, right? Never got checked for my ID on the way back on the flight. Was I was beautiful. like, I was raging. And the ferry crossing was like a four six. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was horrendous. I was like, you're dirty. Yeah. You know? well, I, was I, like, I, oh. I had something similar oh, a few, oh, many years ago. We got the house in France and I was working on Jersey. So, of course, I, I drove to St. Marlow, which is only half an hour from us, got there, and, of course, thought, ah, I forgot my passport. So I thought, oh, I'm going to bluff this. So I went into the, um, whatever it is, Condor Terminal, and the French girl, very nice, says, yeah, we don't mind you going to Jersey without your passport. So, of course, they rang through to Jersey to see if it was okay. Yes, it was okay. So I got to Jersey. And they strip the car from top to bottom on Jersey. <laughs> Absolutely. Literally, literally. So Maureen had to send the passport across to the hotel so I could come back to France. <laughs> so we've all oh, done it, Robin. Yeah, I know, it. Yeah. I know. But we've it was just the it. irony of no getting checked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I've wasted four hours of my time. Bro. Well, of course, like, now, when we come back to England, of course, now after Brexit, everybody gets the passport stamped. Yeah. But yeah. because we've got French residency, we don't get it stamped. So we can ah. come backwards and forwards to Britain, no it's, problem at all. It's because it's out, it's out of the EU. Where is the EU? Ian, it's a good job because the, I've been abroad quite a few times this year so far. My passport's filling up like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. It's a, oh, mine, mine used to, yeah. It used to be, I think it, I used to go the country about 20 or 30 times a year between mm. holidays and work and all the rest mm. of it. And my passport was always pretty busy. But last sort of two, three years with COVID, it's kind of calmed down and there's a bit of space. Yeah. There. But oh my God, this year, my passport's been getting stamped like you would not believe. Yeah. Well, 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 well my wife, she's half Irish and uh, she's going to, when the kids need to renew their passports, she's going to get Irish passports. All right. Yeah. They'll be eligible for them. Yeah. I won't be eligible, but the kids will and she yeah. will. So I can, I can just see it now. They're going on holiday. They'll be walking right through <laughs> and I'll be sitting true. there for a couple of hours. You know what? You know, yeah. 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 Not too worried. Yeah. 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 Perfect, guys. Right. Well, 
we'll say goodbye today okay then sign off and as i say if you're if you're if you're up across in september let us know when you're there and we'll see what we can do okay then yeah um, well, thanks thanks for the invite it's uh, it's it's nice thank you very much yeah all right cheers guys okay then all right, all right. cheers robin cheers ian cheers, bye, bye bye